Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Paraspar special webinar series organized by the Office of Communications, Indian Institute of Science. Today we have a very special guest, Sudarshan Shaw, who will speak on Bark Ki Khoj Me or on the quest to see a tiger. Before we begin, I would like to give a brief introduction of the speaker today. Sudarshan is a graphic artist and a visual design specialist with an experience of over six years of designing for diverse client and communities. He approaches design as an intensive research driven process that culminates into something simple and sensitive. Several walks in Indian forest, interaction with raw and rooted communities and their ancestral ways of communication re-educated him about the history, inventiveness and effectiveness of folk art. His art style is a unique combination of the cultural and the contemporary, the organic and the geometric, the decorated and the minimal, uh, and he strongly believes in the long lasting impact of communicating through visual language. Also a self-taught bird, uh, birder, uh, an avid wildlife photographer and an inventive sculptor, he steps out of uh, the electronic world quite often to create handcrafted art pieces like mud canvases, painted stones, uh, clay sculptures, and board games. He graduated from NIFT uh, New Delhi in 2016. Since then, he has delivered a range of art and branding projects for Andhra Pradesh Forest Department, Orissa Forest Department, Arunachal Pradesh Forest Department, MOE, FCC, WTI, WCS, NCBS, Shivnadar University, Pratham Books, National Geological Park, and WWF India. His self-funded projects like the Wildlife Map of Orissa, my Picture of Divinity, Folk Indica and other commissioned projects have made their way to multiple news and media outlets. In the future, he wishes to learn and document as much about the land, its nature and the wild wisdom of its natives and design immersive tools and spaces to represent them. So Darshan, we are very glad that you accepted our invitation. I'm sure everyone in the audience is eagerly waiting to hear you. May I now request you to deliver your talk? Thank you. Thank you so much, Bhutas. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity and considering me capable of presenting at an institute as esteemed as IAAC. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for, uh, and I also would like to take this chance to appreciate your deep understanding and sincere efforts towards arting science and communication with uh, special attention to folk art of India. While uh, speaking is not among my strengths, but I genuinely uh, am very excited to share my findings, work, and uh, learn as much as I can from the audience here. So please bear with me. I'll also share a short story about my quest for the tiger and then follow it up with uh, some FAQs to keep it to, a, keep it to the point. Right. So uh, let me start the presentation. It's titled Bagh Ki Khojme on the quest to see a tiger. Among trees, tribes, and temples. I choose this to be chapter one for my story, which is uh, because uh, I was, uh, I'm born and brought up in Bhubaneswar, Odisha. And uh, this coastal state is a uh, rich, uh, is also, uh, you know, called uh, India's best kept city because of its uh, abundance of wildlife, which is, uh, you know, uh, major majority of which is unexplored and uh, the untouched forests, tribes, rituals of ancestry and everything is, you know, amalgamated in this state. So it, it has, it has had a deep lasting impact in me. Uh, I'll show pictures from the presentation. As you can see in the visuals, uh, there are a lot of, you know, uh, rich visuals of uh, traditional art and architecture. Uh, the tribes, the the attire of the tribes, and many other similar symbols and uh, similar symbols, which uh, you know, in my childhood I couldn't understand much. Coming to the next one natural heritage and untouched forests. Odisha is full of uh, uh, these wildlife hotspots and natural heritages. Uh, all these places, it is also, you know, rich in folk art and craft, such as uh, Patachitra and Sora paintings. 
symbolism and metaphors also are a part of Odisha's rich uh, cultural heritage. So uh, this sub uh, this has had an impact on me subconsciously because you know uh, when I choose to go further and study and uh, uh, after my higher uh, higher secondary, I choose to go for uh, BDES, which is Bachelor's in Design in NIFT. So when I think about it today, uh, I think all these uh, you know characteristics of the states had a deep impact in me. Coming to the next chapter, which is a call from the forest. So uh, I had my uh, in NIFT, I had my graduation project uh, for which my topic was uh, a response to the alarm of extinction of wild species and the need for conservation. I visited the famous and uh, popular Anthambo National Park to you know, uh, come up with a range of products that can help generate awareness and fondness for the forest and wildlife in people who live quite far away from them. For people who live in urban areas who are quite disconnected from the uh, you know jungles and nature so uh, in total it was a very unique experience on this visit i discovered that most uh, most of the tourists you know were uh, present in the national park to sight a tiger and uh, often when uh, you don't cite a tiger in such national parks. It, it's considered to be a fail, uh, you know, fail tool or a fail safari. So uh, along with that, uh, while while I must say that the uh, the view, the natural landscape was uh, quite magnificent, uh, along with which came the stories of uh, the famous tigers, such as uh, Machli and uh, Broken Tail which you know spoke about how uh, the place ranthambore which was once ruled by uh, you know uh, royal kings who had spread their kingdom over that area are now ruled by the royal bengal tiger and uh, they also uh, you know expanded their kingdom to a larger extent in uh, rajasthan so this was my visit to ranthambore other than this uh, after the safari, I obviously did sight a tiger, but uh, I came, uh, I was exposed to the outer outer region of the national park, where I saw documentation of the uh, of the wild stories. For example, as you can see in the visual, uh, there's a woman weaving a tiger into a piece of cloth. So this uh, image is from Dastakar. Uh, a non-governmental organization that works and promotes art and crafts for rural women over there. And I I was also lucky enough to visit Rantambo School of Art, wherein they are developing uh, new style and techniques to, you know, visually bring out the tiger stories from the wild. And uh, yeah, there's another picture in which there's a, a man on a horse hunting the tiger. So uh, even though this is this is extracted from the famous painting for paintings of Rajasthan, which is quite popular, and uh, it didn't have much uh, you know presence in Ranthambore in itself, but uh, yeah, it was there in bits and pieces. So all of these stories and uh, arts and crafts and influences, uh, you know, inspired me to make my uh, make the collaterals and come up with some products for my graduation project. So these were some of the, uh, these are some of the visuals from the project. Uh, as you can see in the right, uh, there's a bark where, wherein I had provided the bark along with a, a tool, you know, where, uh, with which you can carve the bark. So this was uh, with respect to the story of uh, the fact of how the tiger scratches, you know, marks its territory by scratching over the tree trunks. And uh, so, yeah, it was uh, to, uh, you know, give, uh, give a factual information and also ignite, a, you know, spirit of uh, coming up with something of your own. And as you can see, there is also an uh, impact of uh, in influence of the block printings that were done in the Staka, uh, which I, uh, you know, innovated and created some other species in that. And I made some uh, 
products such as the postcard stamps and uh, some compositions which could go on t-shirts and other deliverables such as uh, notebooks and all so uh, overall i could i could say there's uh, that in spite of me not seeing a tiger uh, but uh, coming up uh, and meeting you know uh, coming i mean interacting with the people who were outside the park who were engaged in different activities i uh, i got to see that there was definitely an interconnection between the land the wild and the culture so this was my first uh, first impression that set in me while uh, i was uh, while i went to study uh, wildlife and art in general inside a national park coming to the second chapter uh, where i wanted to expand my idea and knowledge regarding the subject uh, because uh, the visit to ranthambore had a long imp uh, large impact in me i i went uh, to another national park which is corbett national park corbett national park is once again one of the most uh, you know famous national parks in our country a wildlife destination as such in our country this time uh, beside the jeep safaris i did several walks in and around the forest because uh, i took a safari in the jeep and also a canter uh, i'll be lying if i would say that uh, the place wasn't magnificent it was magnificent it was amusing and uh, being a first timer to that place you know i got to see different uh, wildlife uh, different uh, flora and fauna and uh, also uh, a bio a biodiversity uh, hub in itself in this national park but again uh, i always felt a gap a constant disconnect uh, and otherness because i because the safari was so fast and uh, there were so many visuals coming uh, in front of me in such such a short span of time that i didn't know what to make out of it so i decided to uh, you know get out of the region and go to the fringes and explore more so that i could uh, you know see more visuals related to culture and other aspects as well yeah so when i started walking the fringe forest i discovered the connection the connection was in terms of uh, the people the people and the way they uh, viewed the wildlife in and around them their own perspectives the birds that i heard the birds that i thought were you know uh, chirping for me i i mean i was di directly uh, this interaction of me with the wild in the fringes of the park was uh, direct in terms of uh, uh, i mean interaction uh, which uh, which i felt wasn't there in the safaris so i visited uh, a few areas were in uh, as you can see there were temples there were people in and around the temples and uh, they had many stories to say uh, for example uh, while i was in the jeep i could uh, you know they they talked about tigers they named the tigers with numbers they uh, talked about uh, the biodiversity and uh, what all they had inside the national park but uh something was missing in terms of relation with us because you know uh we are the one who are going to such places so while we interact with the communities we get to know why we are there and uh, what is that you know uh, i mean attracts us over to such kind of places so uh, the fringes uh, and these places and people and the stories were were quite quite new to me and uh, it also gave me a you know different kind of perspective to see wildlife and explore more about it so uh, then i thought of you know uh, exploring more and more obviously and i started documenting wildlife and i started documenting stories from the wild uh, so the next chapter is about how i you know stumbled upon i i went to a I went to Ramnagar 
I went to a small village in Ramnagar, a very very small village in Ramnagar called uh, Kyari, where uh, it was a it was a new uh, very new experience for me because uh, uh, from that point my story took a new turn because this village uh, was inside dense forest with you know river flowing uh, right beside mud houses, a river that uh, came from the trees which were over on the hills and around the village, the intersection of two or more elements, beings or systems, the intersection of human communities and wildlife was present there. So, so this was the place where I thought, uh, you know, life and its meaning is only found when such interactions exist in nature. So this is the place where I took, you know, several trails uh, this was the first time I was guided by uh, naturalists. These naturalists were from uh, from the same village. They were the villages of Kyari. And uh, this is the place uh, where everything seemed native. It seemed as if we belonged to the place in terms of our relationships with the wild and how we in interacted and the sense of interconnectedness and uh, a fair way of living was inspired from such interactions. The uh, the villages over there, you know, were uh, were a storehouse of wild wisdom, and uh, their understanding of natural systems, interconnectedness, interconnectedness, and everything was uh, very much inspiring to me. So uh, all this, you know, uh, gave me an understanding of uh, what we are and what our relationship with the wild is. So. Uh, while we have always seen species, uh, individual species as individual elements, but uh, this is the place where I can say I learned that we existed in relation and not in isolation. So uh, these experiences for me were quite new. Uh, from the trails in the forest, I, I got the opportunity to see uh, rare wildlife their natural history movements, movements, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the, also the stories which were, you know, which came from the villages over there. So all all of this inspired me in a way to come up with a series of artwork, which I termed as my picture of divinity, where I talk about relationships in the wild and uh, how everything is all about coexistence, and uh, each element is about about uh, in his element is present with respect to its surrounding and not in isolation. So I'd like you to go through the artworks. Uh, the first one is Woodpecker and the Ailing Tree, wherein I talk about how uh, we all must have heard about how woodpeckers, you know, uh, pick in the woods and, uh, you know, eat insects or make, uh, you know, small holes for uh, their nesting. Uh, but this was this was uh, this artwork was done uh, majorly because I wanted to bring on the hindsight the importance of uh, relationships. So when we are seeing this ailing tree and a woodpecker, what we see in here is how a woodpecker is you know digging the uh, the affected area of the tree where there are insects or some other pests who have you know destroyed that region. So the woodpecker is uh, taking the tree and eating its own food and at the same time is also curing the tree of the uh, ailment. So this, uh, I thought uh, this to be a very uh, important uh, and a beautiful depiction and also a beautiful natural history movement that goes on in and around us that we often neglect. The second one is Hornbill and the Fig Tree. This was a very, very, uh, you know, uh, a rare sighting in itself and also a sighting of a lifetime for me, wherein I got to see hornbill pairs and their nest uh, on the large old trees of the forest. So uh, in this uh, artwork, I explain how the relation of the fig tree and the hornbill is, uh, is how, it, how it's balanced, how the tree, uh, you know, acts as a the tree itself acts as the womb of the hornbill, wherein uh, 
the hornbill gets its food in and around the uh, gets its food from the species which you know uh, make their home in the tree in the large tree old uh, tree of the forest but uh, the tree also helps out uh, you know by by keeping uh, the egg and uh, becoming the womb of the future generation of the forest that is yet to come because this small hornbill that will you know become a, become an adult and it will uh, you know sow seeds for future forest that will come up so over here also we see how relationship exists in a balanced way in the wild i'll show you two more artworks the third one is turtle and the sea and the fourth is owl and darkness so i'll speak about turtle and the sea this uh, moment is this experience that i had was uh, from the eastern coast in my state in odisha a place where the river rusikulya meets the indian ocean so that's the rusikulya river mouth Uh, this is the place where uh, a big event, uh, which is also called Hari Bada, which means the arrival. This is the place where you know turtles in thousands of numbers uh, come to the land from the sea and uh, lay their eggs and then go to the sea, go back to the sea. And it is quite uh, amusing and astonishing because these same turtle, uh, these small turtles, when hatched from the eggs. go back to the sea and after about 20 years when they uh, when they want uh, when they had have to produce offsprings they come back to the exact same location so this shows how uh, you know the there is an interaction between the land and the sea and there is something that is tying up uh, uh, so here that that bridge is the turtle which which is how i see this phenomena taking place and the fourth one is owl and darkness wherein uh, i have uh, we have seen how there are negative connotations to uh, darkness how evil and uh, negative things are attached to the word darkness but when there are uh, but naturally when there are uh, so many species which exist and you know are active during the night which have the life uh, in life functioning in night there there must be something which uh, you know we miss so uh, during the day when there's a lot of light for us we uh, we might be seeing many things we see objects as it is but uh, we can imagine we can only imagine when you know the light goes off or there is darkness uh, that is the time you know when the imagination actually starts that is the time you know when we see most of the things we imagine things to be present so uh, that's the relation that i wanted to show between the owl and darkness and how such beautiful beings exist in the wild because of this so uh, yeah so while i'm uh, while i'm still in the village uh, i was very excited and i you know i kept on asking uh, uh, stories related to you know, wildlife interactions with the villagers and i uh, i got i got to learn and hear i mean lot of stories regarding the tiger habitats and with each story uh, the size of the tiger the weight of the tiger and the strength of the tiger used uh, you know used to change so i would always imagine tiger to be uh, of a certain size but then when i hear something else about the tiger or a different interaction uh, i think uh, uh, all my previous you know the visual that i had uh, made in my mind regarding uh, how a tiger in real life would be uh, would change immediately so uh, taking all those stories uh, i created this artwork called tiger boundary where you can see uh, the tiger is moving around the uh, around a certain patch of land which i see as uh, the interaction of river pond the villages and the whole landscape and how the tiger is you know in a certain way guarding the whole, guarding its whole territory at the same time it's doing its own movements for example it's uh, scratching the bark it's uh, you know peeing on the bark it's fighting along with another tiger it's mating 
so this uh, this artwork actually uh, you know uh, brought in it's an amalgamation of all the stories that i had heard from the uh, villagers so uh, in in bits you could see how the village uh, the person is you know uh, farming in a certain uh, portion of the land and a woman is uh, you know taking care of a, a deer cub and how life is going in and around uh, and it's being protected by the uh, ruling tiger of that region another important thing is uh, when we hear stories from the villagers who are in the fringes uh, so these are the people who have you know somewhat direct interaction with the wild so their stories are quite impartial because uh, when we hear stories in terms of uh, wilderness we will always uh, we have an uh, i mean we romanticize the story and we always so one side mostly one side wherein uh, it talks about the beauty of the land and how majestic everything are but here i got to you know see a a different perspective uh, like when they spoke about how the tigers you know during some time uh, for some instances they would attack the uh, uh, near the fringes they would attack herbivores and they would uh, you know attack or uh, be uh, be aggressive towards the villages but at the same time uh, when at night the tiger you know guards their crops uh, from the herbivores that are quite abundant in that region so in a way we see how they maintain and you know compromise their relationship to a level uh, which is very impartial and which is uh, which is the reality that is taking place in a in a natural landscape which is uh, villages like kyari so yeah uh, even even though i have uh, i haven't uh, yet seen a tiger but uh, i think i have seen many uh, from the perspective of the people who have seen them through their own eyes for example the villages of kyari in uttarakhand and the villages in odisha to the villages in uh, northeast to the villages in maharashtra so all of them had different tigers in the mind so i saw the tigers through them which i uh, depicted in my next artwork which is titled uh, nine tigers wherein i have depicted how uh, dif- there are you know there exist different tigers in different landscapes of the uh, of our country so as you can see in this uh, artwork if you look at the thanka artwork which is uh, left of center you can see the flowing lines over the body the stripes which are quite flowing in nature so the people uh, people in the himalayas the way they saw the tigers the way uh, they were inspired by the you know uh, flowing nature of the clouds in that region and they uh, they imprinted those characters into the tiger they saw into the tiger they uh, made similarly uh, when you see the pose of the fur painting tiger of rajasthan which is the top left corner the first one you can uh, imagine how you know the tiger has that royal stance in it and uh, it is uh, you know posing in a way how the uh, with the poise of royalness which is quite uh, you know the character of the land that it comes from which is uh, rajasthan so this was a representation of tigers from different land cultures and characters uh coming to the coming to the next set of questions uh you know that have always come up come up in my mind while i was uh, uh, approaching art along with wild stories from the wild uh, there were many uh, hiccups there were a uh, question that would often come to my mind as to what would be the best way you know to portray uh, portray the wild stories so that a greater and larger audience could uh, you know uh, see and learn and make something out of it so coming to the first question which is why folk art so this is a painting of nine birds uh, so uh, while while uh, in the forests of sibalik in the lower himalayas uh, 
the people who have visited those place uh, uh, will agree with me that there there are huge patches where you know one can see two different worlds on opposite sides of a trail while you are walking in the jungle you would see the forest is divided into two one is the native forest with diverse trees sals and figs which is you know uh, which has abundance of wildlife which is full of wildlife on one side and then there are the teak forests with no other plants growing and uh, there are bare minimum life around around that region so uh, the locals told me these were the plantations you know which were done by the britishers for commercial benefits the the i mean in uh, real terms the indian forest haven't yet got their independence uh, we must uh, have also you know heard about stories of lantana uh, you know the species of uh, flora which you know uh, the british uh, brought to uh, increase the aesthetic uh, capabilities of this land but it turned out it uh, it became a you know curse to the uh, wilderness of our country so i found that uh, there were also similar colonizations in the forest of middle himalayas where pine trees had high aesthetic and commercial value but uh, but they you know engulfed most of the native biodiversity i also felt that our landscape visual vocabulary and our sense of aesthetics are also quite invisibly you know colonized uh, to a great extent while they are uh, while they, they may seem trendy but uh, there is a disconnect with the you know true purpose of the land uh, i mean uh, it has a disconnect with the culture of the people they come from and hence the masses could uh, the indian masses could barely you know relate to it. Uh, so uh, what happens in this is uh, there are many things which are lost in translation while we are depicting scenes from the wild or we are depicting stories from the wild and hence uh, we could uh, barely relate to it and uh, the messages were often lot lost in translation so bringing back folk art and other inspired styles to the mainstream also you know brings back the lost voices and connection to india other than this i found many more reasons to learn from and advocate folk art uh, in india so i'll share the next slide with uh, various reasons why you know folk art is important i would uh, let this slide be for a minute so that you can go through all the points so these uh, these nine points uh, are what i have articulated in a way to you know uh, represent what i have been doing till now and the information that i have gathered from in and around my experiences so coming to the next question which is is folk art mythological uh, while i uh, while i believe that in the land of uh, while i believe india which is uh, you know a land of long lasting oral traditions uh, the lines between history and mythology is uh, often blurred so uh, it is uh, it is quite sure that you know folk art draws its uh, you know subjects from popular mythology theories of creation and uh, alternate belief systems and laws and ethics but is, it is also full of evidences of authentic recordings of historical events lifestyles and uh, local biodiversity too for example when you see this uh, palm leaf engravings these are paintings from odisha where you could see they have you know depicted uh, depicted the local flora of that region so uh, i was lucky enough to witness such kind of uh, you know engravings and crafts from uh, which is quite uh, you know close to my home where they have documented flora of our region uh, from about 400 to 500 years so this is quite rich in terms of that so when we are talking about folk art and mythology will have to you know with an open mind think about how to distinguish between the two and what is the information that we need to you know connect with the masses so that the right information goes through and is uh, you know accepted in uh, well means and good terms the next is folk art and science communication so uh, while exploring uh, possibilities of 
uh, you know one project at a time where i wanted to depict uh, ideas and topics uh, using folk art uh, i i got the opportunity to you know work with ncbs in bangalore so they commissioned this artwork to complement their uh, ground breaking uh, paper on black tigers of odisha i created this uh, artwork inspired by the patachitra folk art of the state so the team of scientists who did intense ground work for about 8 to uh, around 10 13 years uh, they uh, they identified and uh, the power they identified the power and popularity of the artwork of the folk art and how you know it could uh, condense the complexities of the uh, of the topic of the theme and they would bring in in one piece so that uh, you know people uh, you know uh, can relate much more to it and uh, so they believed in this concept of you know portraying this uh, scientific uh, uh, achievement uh, in terms of uh, visual arts so if you see this artwork and if you think uh, this artwork has no words you know attached to it so imagine you know when you are narrating a, narrating something uh, of a different language to a person from a different who is uh, who has no idea about that language for example when you are uh, talking in hindi to a person in odisha who speaks only odia language i feel uh, this kind of art you know uh, uh, becomes the bridge it becomes the visual language which is uh, which is quite similar to written and verbal languages it develops uh, characteristics and association to the land and its people it is hence much more consumable and relatable to the people also so uh, i like to share two more artworks uh, from my collection the first one is uh, from the mangrove habitat conservation in kendrapara district of odisha uh, here you can see how uh, certain portions have been depicted on how an ecosystem a mangrove ecosystem works for example if you see the right uh, right side of the artwork you will see how there is rigidity in terms of you know division you see water and land and how the uh, how the density of trees and uh, tactile and uh, intact uh, stones have you know uh, created a barrier so that uh, there is uh, you know life uh, i mean there is life abundance of life in both ways and they are uh, there's a peaceful coexistence but when you are seeing to the left uh, in the left portion you will see how the intactness missing the trees missing is creating an impact on uh, uh, creating a direct impact on the villagers and uh, you know the, it is breaking a, a natural ecosystem of that region and which often causes uh, you know problems in larger aspects so this was done uh, to show that uh, show the impact of uh, mangrove plantations and drives in a certain region of our country the second one the smaller one is uh, regarding the smooth coated uh, coated otter conservation project in puri odisha again this is uh, near the coastal region where uh, smooth coated otters are found so uh, already you know uh, the otters or the species which are not in the mainstream are often uh, uh, often depicted as individual species people already know less uh, uh, have less information about them but uh, it's also not well known among people so i thought of uh, you know bringing uh, the study the study of around 6 month that the scientists local scientists did over there and i depicted the habitat the relationship of the uh, the villagers who uh, who mostly were uh, fishermen and how they you know shared the same space and uh, lived in coexistence so uh, these are two examples of the artwork coming to the theory that i you know could extract from this experience is the two r theory where you know broadly you can char- characterize folk art to be receptive and representative so as you can see the usage of folk vocabulary increases the reception of a story for its local audience and it increases the representation so as i said earlier uh, you know when uh, when the artwork comes from a land it is representative for sure it uh, uh, because you know masses of that region understand it in their language 
so there is a great connect between them and uh, yeah so this was the theory I, that i came up with the next question is folk art into conservation so uh, in this topic i would like to clarify through my uh, through the maps that i did a uh, few years back wherein i wanted to represent uh, the cultural diversity the local biodiversity and regional art and crafts of uh, of my home state odisha so consider this map as uh, you know i created to represent the biodiversity so they are inspired by uh, the basic and basics and techniques of the local and traditional folk art of the state for example here it is patachitra which is uh, you know true to the nature and culture of the land so uh, why i thought uh, of you know uh, taking folk art uh, as the base of creating and uh, providing such information to a big audience is because you know folk art uh, to the masses in india uh, has been held in high regard uh, it is considered auspicious and sacred by most cultures of india and its people It, it, it finds a space in each and every household of the states. For example, in my state, most of the houses uh, that I would visit have a Patachitra painting in one corner or in one big space of their house. Uh, so, uh, you know, it finds uh, spaces in each of the household. So, representing a new, newer wildlife and biodiversity in similar fashion remarkably, you know, expands the audience and also brings in awareness. and conservation in the longer run it reaches out and uh, connects with the masses so i would like to uh, like you to see another example of that which is uh, the andhra pradesh biodiversity map which was commissioned by uh, the forest department of andhra pradesh here in i have shown uh, eight important tribes of that region and uh, the local biodiversity hotspots uh, which again uh, is inspired by sri kalahasti kalamkari of that region uh, folk art of that region so the response to this map was overwhelming in terms of the connect that it found with the you know local people and also people outside the state of andhra pradesh so uh, i did a few other maps for example this uh, small map of mangala jodi wetlands in odisha so this was commissioned by uh, the odisha tourism department wherein i uh, showed the relationship uh, between uh, the interaction between the villages who live in proximity in close proximity with the wildlife uh, this is uh, this mangla jodi wetland is in the fringes of uh, the big chilika lake and uh, uh, so yeah the people of, of the villages nearby and the birds who come from different uh, you know regions of the world they share the same space and also if you pay attention to the small icons that i did uh, one wherein there is a fish and the fisherman is uh, right above the fish and he's uh, you know sitting along with the king fisher uh, uh, in that art art piece in that symbol uh, this is where i have you know symbolized how the whole region which is uh, you know there is abundance of uh, you know uh, fishes in the uh, in the big lake so i have depicted them uh, them symbolically in uh, in terms of a big fish and when again uh, yeah and uh, also the fisherman is uh, you know sitting along with the the kingfisher uh, and uh, both of them share the fish as their food so this is what i have depicted uh, uh, as a symbol which i was talking earlier while i was uh, talking about the symbolisms and you know characters present in uh, the cultural heritage of uh, a state in a uh, folk painting and uh, if you see the one the symbol above that there is a bow and an arrow and the arrow is stretched to a point that it is stalled and there is a bird sitting on a nest which is built on that arrow so this was done to depict uh, you know how the villages who were once hunter in the same land uh, gave up hunting so uh, so that is symbolized by how the arrow bow and arrow is stalled in a way and the birds have come up and built their nest so that the future generation of you know wildlife uh, grows in that region so this was the uh, mangla jodi wetlands of odisha the next is uh, folk art into education so uh, 
when it comes to education the organic and nature like characteristics of folk art leaves a deep impression on children for example uh, uh, the audiences uh, to to my artworks they come up to me and say how their kids and their children are you know uh, glued to the visuals that i have uh, uh, represented presented in my artwork and how they love to see the artworks and spend a lot of time with them so as you can see in the slide uh, this is for a book that i did with pratham books which is a, when a forest wakes up this is a, this is regarding a concept of animism a belief in the gond tribe of central india and uh, according to which uh, you know everything is living be it hills rocks rivers the skies the mountains and everything even a stone uh, in front of you so i feel that uh, you know the visuals are more likely to be believed and remembered especially uh, when you are at a certain age when you are at a young age you know they uh, they help you know translate these beliefs and behavior in future uh, when the kid grows up that that behavioral change and belief change would uh, you know be ingrained uh, ingrained in them in their childhood so uh, for example when you so uh, when we see an apple we can see different shades of an apple for example uh, an apple uh, might be 60% red 20% orange is yellowish and uh, some portions of green but when you show, uh, showing that same apple to a kid uh, what he will pick when he draws that apple is a round shape and a red color in it so this is how you know uh, folk art actually helps because being bold organic wild and free in terms of imagination uh, it creates a sense of it gives a sense of freedom to us when we are approaching certain topics and certain uh, subjects so this is how it can become you know a great tool for for uh, citizen science and uh, increase the accessibility to both uh, science as well as art coming to the uh, last slide so this is about the future prospects and challenges that we have in terms of uh, folk art and its uh, and its practice in our country so uh, we all might have heard how you know uh, there's a tra tragedy of sorts in uh, in terms of how folk art practices and communities have been uh, facing challenges in our country while some have earned back that uh, that reputation by you know working really hard and uh, gaining that position in the societies but uh, others a uh, majority of them you know the struggle to see the light and uh, making a living out of folk art uh, is quite difficult for them but uh, somehow it is also an emerging trend which at present has been more than encouraging to many communities but the younger generation somehow uh, do not see high value in terms of you know uh, uh, practicing folk art so i feel uh, that popularizing this folk art in the mainstream uh, main art art landscape can create both security and well deserved uh, you know dignity for our very own cultural heritage uh, also uh, lastly i would uh, bring your attention to uh, these two images on the slide which is uh, you know uh, an uh, a great initiative by uh, K K W I T Institute, Kit Institute in Odisha, wherein they have introduced uh, 14 professors of practices. So these are uh, the tribals from pristine uh, uh, tribal regions of Odisha, where they, uh, you know, uh, practice uh, folk art in uh, different styles and subjects. For example, dance, music, language, and ecological. Uh, knowledge that they gain with them so they have been introduced to the college so that you know people uh, the students who could uh, you know get informal teachings on subjects uh, various subjects uh, and it would help uh, the, uh, the institute and the state in protecting preserving and promoting tribal culture as well so i feel step, steps like this you know uh, are are milestone visions and also promise a whole some future to the country with respect to both uh, economy ecology and uh, uh, respect in terms of folk art thank you sudarshan for the talk and 
for sharing with us those amazing, amazing artwork. They are very inspiring and very, I mean, truly spectacular. Uh, shall we take some questions now? Yeah, sure. So I'll request the audience to you know, ask the questions by raising the hand or by typing the question in the chat box. I can read it, read it out if you like. Yes, please go ahead. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Hello, Sudarshan. Hello, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, you are audible. Uh, I'm, I'm BNN Prasad, an alumni of uh, IIC. Uh, the the title okay. for the topic that you have chosen talks yes. about the tiger. Yeah. So, but you have also mentioned many other things, and uh, your link to folk art and the life, and especially things we don't know. We who live in the cities and other places, so there is a wonderful uh, you know, connection between those two. But my question was that. Why is it that you have opened the topic with Tiger? Thank you so much sir, for the question. Uh, yeah. uh, I chose this title because uh, to be honest, uh, this is how it in a way started for me. Because when yeah. you have, uh, you know, very little or almost no knowledge about the wilderness and, you know, things going around, as ourselves around our urban landscapes so this was one point you know which was much talked about it is all about tigers in the landscape and uh, i remember i started this uh, you know journey around uh, in and around the year 2012 and uh, this was right after you know the uh, numbers of the tigers had uh, you know taken a major space in our uh, in our minds when uh, data was released in terms of presence of around 14 and 11, 1411 tigers in our country, which was quite alarming for all of us. And suddenly, tigers was all about wildlife. Tigers, tiger was the representative of wildlife in our country. It became the representative. So I'll be honest. I started with that thing in my mind. I I really went to you know search for tigers. I was very excited that uh, how I would react and what impression it would create in me. Uh, create upon me when I see my first tiger. So that's how it started. And uh, eventually, yeah, uh, how all the experiences, you know, took turns and, uh, you know, turn, uh, gave a new turn to my exploration. So uh, that's why I named the topic because that's, that's, uh, that's really uh, what, uh, uh, how the, uh, you know, journey started. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Please go ahead. I uh, enjoyed the talk very much, Mr. Sudarshan. It is wonderful. Uh, it also brought back memories of my own travels uh, across India and uh, looking at the tribal and the folk art. Uh, I find uh, the point that you made about the professors of practice in Kit Bhuvaneshwar uh, very encouraging. Um, the earlier uh, uh, ways of uh, look at, uh, ensuring our indigenous art through our own uh, departments of arts and culture in different states uh, was one such program through Chitrakala Parishads and things like that. But uh, are there any recent uh, developments in other states where similar practices have been taken up uh, to promote these uh, professors of practice? I mean, I find that nice word. Uh, to encourage the artists and uh, how do you make it uh, more? Uh, of course, I do find that most of these arts uh, are uh, pretty reasonably priced and much available to the younger crowd, but uh, I don't find the same kind of an enthusiasm in people in going and looking at them and trying to protect them or making it more popular among our own. own uh, uh, people there. Are there any other practices in any other states that you have seen this? Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the question. Uh, coming to the, uh, I'll divide it into two parts. The first one being uh, the professor of practices initiative in Bhuvaneshwar, and if they have, you know, similar kind of uh, initiatives have come in, come up in different states. Uh, I haven't heard any any such initiative as of now. This was also, uh, you know. And uh, I came, uh, I stumbled upon this on Twitter uh, by accident about this information because I was 
uh, searching for something which was related to tribal culture. So, but I would like to share on uh, on uh, if if similar kind of things have been you know done in the past. So while I was uh, doing my course in NIFT, I was uh, uh, we were you know uh, the institute brought in professors. I mean they brought in uh, you know uh, tribal or people uh, uh, people from uh, urban landscapes who were practicing such folk art or who were you know uh, very knowledgeable in certain kind of art and they used to be our guest lecture uh, guest lecturers so they they used to take two to three periods uh, from our schedule and talk to us about various kind of art i'm uh, i'm sure uh, such a similar uh, you know uh, smaller initiatives have started in our country and have been going on in similar institutions but uh, in bigger scale i'm not very much aware of that and uh, i would say uh, to the second portion where uh, it's about the where you are talking about the enthusiasm and the lack of it in our country it uh, i think uh, it uh, it will take uh, it will take a bit of time because uh, these explorations are still coming up and this have uh, this have uh, uh, this uh, artworks and folk art uh, have always been uh, very closely related to uh, you know, in uh, close related to people in realistic sense. I mean, they were not very much, uh, you know, uh, brought up in social media or media as such. So that enthusiasm might return or might come up uh, when we, you know, where there's abundance of information and visuals uh, in future. I'm very hopeful of that. Thank you. Thank you. There is a comment in the chat box by Shubhra Shukla. She says, not a question, just appreciation, appreciation of, for capturing and learning the styles of so many different folk arts and then conceptualizing artwork in that particular style. Thank you, Subh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else has a question? Sudarshan uh, Prasad, again, I want to ask you another question. Yes. Um, the art, the folk art work you have shown here is all done by you. Yes, sir. And and uh, this is uh, a feature of Orissa or uh, is it any combination of other artworks? Okay, sir. So, uh, 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 for example, I just want to say, for example, uh, we have heard of Madhubani, you know. So yeah, yes. Madhubani has a particular uh, uh, style of uh, showing. So uh, that, that was my question. Okay, sir. So, uh, yeah, uh, all of these artworks are done by me. So, uh, as I explained earlier, that most of my influences uh, for now have been uh, the local folk art from Odisha and West Bengal to an extent because I used to visit that state very often in my childhood. So, the silhouettes and forms uh, of my art are very much inspired by those. Uh, but there is also innovation in terms of that because when you when you see the smooth coated otter in my artwork. You won't find the smooth coated otter in any, uh, you know, folk art. Folk art always had that, you know, limitations in terms of the species biodiversity and the interactions that they had, and that they had, and not in terms of rarity. So while I'm doing this, uh, I'm also innovating in terms of, uh, you know, folk styles, which is again my main, which is again uh, is my main aim, you know, to you know encourage people with come up with their own styles. They uh, they might come up. Uh, they might uh, you know uh, be presented with various visuals and various kind of focus. But when they are exploring and when they want to you know portray something, they could come up with their something of their own, a new style, uh, for instance, like uh, the one I have been uh, exploring and doing. Any more question? Yeah, just one more question. I was very keen to know. I like your idea of the maps that you did for the states. Have you done any other states like that? Gujarat or Karnataka? And OK, uh, uh, yes, ma'am. So I've worked uh, uh, on four maps which are uh, done inspired by, you know, which have depiction of local uh, flora and fauna in their own regional artworks. But I've also worked uh, with various NGOs in portraying the local biodiversity of other states such as Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat also. But there is a you know, limitation in terms of uh, use of folk art. But uh, 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 keeping aside the species, 
the main base and look or look and feel of the map has been inspired by them i share all my artworks and similar artworks in my social media accounts and write a note you know explaining all the process and uh, the inspiration for such artworks okay thank you thank you if there is no question we'll call it a day sudarshan today okay yeah thank you so much for accepting our invitation once again i would like to thank you for coming and speaking to us it was really very inspiring to listen to you and in many ways it also uh, you know reaffirms my own uh, you know conviction in folk art thank you so much for this term. thank you so and much we hope to thank you so yeah much. thank you thank you thank please you. be in touch with the office of communications sure. thank you